Hey, it's Bound to Divide here with Ableton Tips, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really nice lush evolving pad using um, Wavetable in Ableton. Okay, so I've just uh, got some chords that I've prepared for this. The whole point of this was just to basically make really big chords, so you can see there's lots of voices being used here, they're nice and spread out across the octaves. Okay, so we just uh, loaded up Wavetable. And now the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to oscillate to one over here and setting it to a saw wave. It doesn't have to be like perfectly a saw wave, you can maybe shift it up a bit so you're getting something slightly more unique. And that's going to sound like this. Let's just turn down the volume here. Okay, so for this pad we want a lot of voices and, and we're going to get that from using something called unison. So over here on the right you see it says unison, it says none. If we change that to classic or shimmer or one of these, it's going to create as many voices as we choose. So here we can choose like eight or three or whatever. And I'm going to set this to the maximum of eight voices. And so what this is doing is it's basically creating copies of each voice and uh, spreading them out and detuning them. And that detune is dictated by the amount here. So if we listen to this, you can hear it's nice and wide now, but as I start to increase this amount, you'll hear it detuning and it'll start to become really like uh, smeared and almost like fluffy sounding. And the more you go, it's gonna get, start going out of tune. So we wanted probably, probably around 30%. And we can just try these different modes. I think my favorite one here is Shimmer. I like it because it kind of sounds like it's pitches drifting a little bit like a tape effect. Sounds really nice. Then we're going to go into Oscillate 2 here and we're just going to click on this little square to enable it. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set it to a saw wave. But with this one, we're going to pitch it down 12 semitones. And we're doing that because we want to add another octave of voices to really make like thicken up the pad and make it nice and beefy. So now you can hear we've got this like really huge sound already and we haven't even touched anything else. Okay, so next we're going to be looking at this amp envelope. And with a pad sound, you usually want the pad to kind of like fade in over time. So we can just grab this little square here and increase it, or you can use the attack time here and drag it up and down. Probably want about two seconds. And then we're going to create like a drop off. So we're going to bring down this sustain to about minus 13. This doesn't have to be exact, but basically half the original volume, the half of this um, high point over here. And then we want quite a long decay. Let's make it like six seconds. Okay, and then we want to increase this release because we want the tail of each chord to like overlap from each other and really just make this pad really lush. And we don't want sudden stops between chords. We don't want something like this to happen. We want this to overlap. So I'd say about two seconds of release. And then we're going to go into envelope two and we're going to use this to control the filter. So if I just grab this point here and bring it down, that's what we essentially want to do, but we want to do that automatically. So we're going to use envelope two to modulate this cutoff frequency. So let's go over into the matrix here and we're going to go to filter one frequency. You can see we've clicked on it and now it's white, so we can see it there. And we're just going to go to envelope two and we're just going to increase the amount here. And at the moment it's behaving a bit more like a pluck. I think we're just going to bring it up to about 70. And we're going to have our starting point at like 200 hertz. So yeah, it's behaving a bit like a pluck now and we don't really want that. We need to change the shape of envelope two. A quick way to get back to envelope two is to just click over here and it'll jump back to envelope two. Okay, then we're going to have a similar sort of shape. We want around two seconds of attack. We want a long decay and a nice long release too. Okay, so now we've got some, it's like your typical pad where we've got the filter opening, but it's kind of predictable and boring to me because it's like mathematically doing the same thing every time. And um, 
it just it's not very exciting it doesn't feel very alive like introduce some randomness almost into into the sound um, by using an LFO so I've clicked on LFO one here and we can map it to this um, filter cutoff so now this filter is going to be moving with the envelope it's also going to be moving with that with the LFO so let's first just assign it LFO one to the filter frequency and I'm gonna not do too much maybe about 40 over here if we play that now now you can hear what the LFO is doing, but I don't want the LFO to move so quickly. So we're gonna go over here to the rate and we're gonna change it to, we're gonna click on this little um, button over here, which is it from Hertz into like tempo synced LFO. And here we can change the rate. So you can see if we set this to 16th, we'd get that sort of really fast movement. And what I want is to actually set it to three slash one. So it's gonna be like three bars long, or maybe we can do 1.5. Now let's do three. And I want to change this to a um, triangle shape. Okay, but it's still predictable. And the reason for that is every time we start a new note, the alpha re-triggers and starts from its initial phase point. And that's not going to add any randomness or variation to it. So we, it's very important to just turn off re-trigger here by clicking on this R button over here and now when we play it so now you can see or you can hear that this filter is in a different position on each chord and when when the note when the uh, chord change happens it's at a different position so it's start, now it's starting to feel like somebody's actually just sitting there and turning these by hand and kind of feeling it out so it feels a lot more alive to me okay and then i want to introduce like a little bit of a little bit more of like um, a detuning going out of tune kind of vibe like a tape vibe to it so we're going to use lfo2 here and we're going to map it to the frequency so if we go to pitch here, we go to LFO2, and we're just going to turn this up very slightly. And now you can hear it going up and down in pitch, but that's obviously way too much. So we just need to click on LFO2, and we want to decrease the amount. And what we can do with this is we can also introduce some attack. So it kind of, um, LFO fades in. So we won't hear it for, if we increase it to maybe, I don't know, one second or half a second, we'll only start to hear this LFO fade in uh, towards the end of the chord. So it'll have like the tail of the chord will start pitching a little bit, which is kind of a nice effect. Still sounds like it's a bit too much. So I'm gonna go back here to the matrix and just bring down this pitch amount here to like 1.5. Okay, I like that. I think it sounds good. All right, so now we can, um, I'm thinking of adding a bit of distortion to it. And a great way to do that is to use this filter. And we can change it from clean to any one of these models. These are like... Um, modeled off of real analog filters and stuff so what happens is when you enable one of them for example this prd one which i think is like a moog filter or something um we can take this and now you see this drive if you just focus over here on this little area over here you'll see there's no drive option but when we enable this one suddenly we get that drive feature and we use this to basically introduce some distortion it's like saturating the filter or overdriving the filter so that uh, the signal like clips into the filter and, and distorts and we can get like a nice gritty texture to it but as we do that it's going to increase the volume too so we're going to have to decrease the volume here so let's just listen to it so here you can see this plugin is now clipping going into the red let's bring down the volume quite a lot and I want to actually drive this signal a lot and what you can do with this is you can also introduce resonance when you have the drive up really high resonance doesn't sound the way you'd expect it doesn't um 
like have that sweeping kind of like acid tone to it. The drive actually kind of dampens the resonance. So I'm gonna, it's maybe a little bit too high there. And let's uh, make this steeper here. So we're gonna click on the 12, little 12 button here. That's gonna make it a 24 dB low pass. It's just gonna be steeper. Okay, I think I like the sound of that. Maybe bring it a bit louder. Around there. Okay, so now we've got like the, the base of our sound done. The dry signal sounds pretty good and lush to me. Now what's left is to just go in and EQ it a bit. Let's EQ it. And then we're gonna add some effects to it, so. Here we can see there's a ton of rumble, which I just wanna take out over here. And I feel like the, the low end here is maybe a little bit too muddy, so I'm just gonna take out a tiny bit here. And I also wanna roll off the top end. I don't want it to go so bright. Okay, next up is delay. And I love using delay because you can kind of get these filter movements to repeat a few times um, and it just sounds like really nice musically. A delay on here and we're gonna leave it on three. And what we're gonna do is just change the left and right, the timing of the left and right to make the delay nice and wide. And you can just set it to like one or two percent. That's just gonna offset the left and right and it's essentially gonna make the delay sound a lot wider. So we can increase the feedback too. And I'm just gonna increase the output here. Okay, I like the sound of that. And then lastly, I wanna add some reverb to it. And the reverb I like to use is, is Black Hole by Eventide. But if you don't have that, um, Ableton comes with a um, plugin like a, a Max for Live plugin. I think it's a Max for Live plugin in Live 11, or definitely was in Live 10. Anyway, if you go down to Packs over here, you should have Convolution Reverb. And if you don't, you might need to go and um, install it from Ableton. But it comes with a bunch of presets, and one of the presets is Black Hole. So if you just search Black Hole, and you can go down to Reverb Presets here, and just choose this Black Hole one, double click on it. Now you're getting essentially a recording of that black hole. It's called an impulse response. What they do is they basically record a reverb tail and then create like sort of like a, an algorithmic copy of it. And so it'll sound pretty much identical to the original plugin, but you obviously don't have all the same controls that you would in the other plugin. So it's, it's just like the default preset black hole. But yeah, it sounds great. And let's just bring up the dry wet here. We can come into the EQ here and just reduce the reverb in the low range. I think I'm going to bring down this resonance a bit more. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's more of a process than an exact, you have to do this to make a nice pad. So you can get creative and do your own thing at every step of the way. Um, something else you might wanna explore is like playing with the wavetable position here. In wavetable, you can pretty much click on anything and modulate it. Uh, once you click on it, it'll, it'll just pop up over here in the matrix. And for example, we could assign a LFO2 oscillated position here, and then we'd see that moving a bit. And yeah, you can just get quite creative with it. 
Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to learn more about sound design, check out all the courses we have linked below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.